Welcome to the Bahamas tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening, all. I'm Shishina Roll, as always. It is so great to have you with us. Topping news this evening, police on Grand Bahama investigating the eighth homicide for the year. The incident taking place in the Hannah Hill community last evening. While our ZNS News team was on the scene moments after, police officials declined an interview. However, we did speak with an anonymous witness. Police combed a small part of the Hannah Hill area as word spread about a stabbing incident on Monday evening. The young lady who placed the call to 911 for help says she was sitting in her yard when she heard a scream. So as I was sitting in my yard, I heard a lady from across, from my neighbor. I hear her making noise in the yard. So and then I heard somebody say, call the police, call the police, so I get the phone. I dial the police number and I tell them I need an ambulance right away. And when I, the woman was asking me for my number, my age, so I was giving it and then she was like, is the person breathing? I said, I don't know, because I was sitting in my yard. So I went across there and saw the, the boy <laughs> laying down, gapsing, you know. It was hard for him to breathe and she was telling me, get a piece of cloth, a clean cloth at pressure. And there was two other guys with me, so I was telling them, I sent my sister up to get the piece of cloth and I tell the guys what the lady tell me, she tell me to sit him up. So she, so they got the cloth for me and they had pressure and just when I was still on the phone, she telling me don't go. And I watching him till he last breath. She says despite the situation being scary and troubling, she remained calm until the police and the ambulance arrived on the scene. That's when it was about time when the police come, he was already out. And then she tell me, say don't go, don't go. And then I, she asked me if the police there. She said the ambulance is going to take a long time to come because they're coming from Freeport. It's a very long drive here and then the police come and then they check him and then he went in the ambulance and then it took a very long time to move. Did the ambulance take a long time to come like they said? Mm, kind of because he was like taking a he was breathing taking deep breaths and deep breaths and then slowly and then just when the guy tilted him up in a little bit when the police come just lost his breath. Police reports indicate that the victim is a 16-year-old male who later succumbed to his injuries at the Rand Memorial Hospital. The anonymous witness contends that the Hannah Hill area is relatively a quiet one and is making this appeal to the young men in that community. My advice to you is, if you gotta go to school, go to school and do what you gotta do. And when you do that, you can find an education and you could go anywhere and work and get what you want. In other news, the future of Grand Bahama under the Free National Movement government is said to be is said to hold great promise. Yesterday, newly elected members of Parliament on Grand Bahama taking to the airwaves on the Dow Miller Live show on the ZNS Network. Tonight, the representative for Central Grand Bahama is expressing optimism about the future of this northern island. Grand Bahama is expected to have strong representation in the Minnis-led administration. The Free National Movement claimed all five seats on Grand Bahama, and those members of Parliament will play key roles in the FNM government. MP for Central Grand Bahama Iram Lewis was appointed Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Works. An architect, builder, and project manager, Lewis says this position is a perfect fit. He says a decision is now being made as to whether or not he will be stationed on Grand Bahama. As was mentioned in the speech from the throne, Grand Bahama is going to be given special attention. Yes. Um, as was noted, um, the government understands the importance of a strong Grand Bahama to the progress of, of uh, strong Bahamas. And we cannot give Grand Bahama the kind of attention that it would need if the minister, senior minister, the permanent secretary, mm -hmm. the director, all the building control officer, the parliamentary secretary, or all, all in Nassau, the formula doesn't doesn't uh, um, uh, make sense. So, um, Mr. Bannister is very is open. We we having some good discussions right now, and I do believe, and you will all agree, that mm -hmm. having a presence in Grand Bahama would make a major difference towards progress that we that we so um, uh, much need. Lewis is optimistic about the future of Grand Bahama as he says this island is poised for major growth and development. Our population is around 60,000, you know, plus or minus. But Grand Bahama, Freeport was designed for 250,000, quarter million. So we have a lot of room for growth. Mm -hmm. um, and, and with that kind of critical mass in Grand Bahama, the sky is the limit. I mean, it's, it's unspeakable what, can be, what we can achieve if Grand Bahama is properly utilized. And I believe the strategist Dr. Minnis recognizes that. 
the, the cabinet recognizes that that's why we're paying attention to this engine that is so important to our entire economy. The former professional athlete turned politician says the government will also focus on bringing world-class sporting events to Grand Bahama. We ran the sand, we exited, went over the bridge, uh, went east on Midshipman Road, Millionaire's Road, very beautiful, then we hit Maiden Town Beach, went all the way to Black Bear Beach on the sand again, then back on the road and we finished on Tino Beach. So again, it was extreme, the reviews were just, just outstanding. Mm -hmm. So we're going to build that into a major world-class event. And it's, we, uh, we got requests from Kenya um, last year, requests from Australia, Canada, all over. They're interested in coming to be a part of the Grand Bahama Extreme. So it, wow. it can happen. A newcomer to frontline politics, Lewis says politics is evolving and the electorate is demanding more from elected officials. I had a coach who wrote my programs, who ensured that I did the proper workout. If I didn't do what I was supposed to do, I would sit down. I would not be able to perform. These millennials... They are the coaches. They are our coaches right now. They are our overseers. They are coaching if, if, if we do not do what we, I'm saying, if, if we do not do what they expect, mm. like the coach bench us, we uh, will get our walking tickets in, in the short order. So they're going to keep us honest. They're going to keep us focused in showing that if we want to return, we better deliver. Sabrina Brown, Saturnist Network News. Well, the national budget expected to be delivered in Parliament tomorrow. It is the first for the Free National Movement government, led by Prime Minister the Honorable Dr. Hubert Minnis, and will set the fiscal blueprint for the country from July 1st of this year to June 30th, 2018. In its manifesto, the Free National Movement has committed to repealing VAT on a number of items, along with a number of additional fiscal reforms, including reviewing and improving the budget process. Now, there is also a commitment to provide incentives to encourage efficient collection of revenue, reduce the annual recurrent expenditure, amend the Business License Act, and employ public-private partnerships to finance capital projects that are, that are economic in nature. Now, while the Minister of Finance, Peter Turnquest, reported that there will be no new taxes in this budgetary year, he did indicate that what was promised to the Bahamian people during the campaign will be delivered. Switching gears now, the 2017 Atlantic hurricane season is just two days away. Local businesses have stocked their shelves and warehouses with the necessary supplies to assist residents with preparation efforts in the event of a storm. Kimberly Mullings has more. As the country prepares for what some forecasters predict will be an above-normal hurricane season, the demand for hurricane supplies on Grand Bahama is a real concern. Dolly Madison Home Center is fully stocked with everything from building supplies to generators and more with additional items in storage to better assist Grand Bahamians get ready for the hurricane season which begins June 1st. General Manager of Dolly Madison James Roll says the company is prepared to meet the needs of residents in anticipation of this busy hurricane season. This year is no exception. We don't want to um, experience a hurricane but we always prepared and so um, if the time does come for us to um, take action, uh, we're going to be there. Rule warns that when it comes to hurricanes or any natural disaster, protection of life and property must be a priority. We realize that um, persons are very, very responsive to the hurricane season. One of the things that they um, normally do is make sure that they have the proper hurricane supplies on hand. As you know, Dolly Madison is a store that basically provides all of the essentials for how, how can preparedness. Items used during a storm like candles, matches, lamps and flashlights, gas stoves, portable chargers, coolers, machetes and hand saws, Rose says can be used year-round in homes. He added that preparation should not be taken lightly. Have the basic hurricane um, essentials at hand and so when there is, if there is a call for um, hurricane preparedness, that you can just get those items that you really do not need on a day-to-day -day basis. But um, the, the, the basic day-to-day -day hurricane um, supply is usually the stuff that we have at home all the time. Kimberly Mullings, ZNS Network News. Kimberly, that says more news right after this.